Hi there, my name is John Jardine from Agility and today I'm going to show you how to set up Git and Source Tree within your environment. Now just two things to note before we get started. First, if you don't know anything about Git and Source Control Management, stop the video right now and go and learn this technology. It is an absolute requirement in one's development environment, whether it be client-side or server-side development. The second note is that Source Tree is optional. And uh, but it's something that agility that we install by default. It's a visual tool to interface with your source controlled uh, designs. Uh, it's standalone, it runs outside any kind of development environment and it really works well when you are a person who has to work with multiple development tools uh, that all take that all make use of source control management. Source tree really just does the job and it does the job well. So let's get these tools installed. Sierra, I have my Mac VM started. I'm running High Sierra, and uh, this is a fresh install of High Sierra, so uh, very little has been configured inside it. And what we want to do now is we want to get uh, Git up and running. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I can go and launch Terminal, and the first thing that I will do is I'll test to see if Git is running and if every and if all the minimum requirements for Git are in place. So I'm just going to say uh, Git dash dash version. It's a great way to see if Git is running. Alright, so here's the first thing that gets prompted when you have a brand new um, OSX environment is that it says it requires command line developer tools. Would you like to install these tools? Sure, why not? Let's click on the install button. I agree. And this should take a moment uh, to download depending on your internet speed. Right, welcome back and I've got the prompt on my side that the software was installed so I'm just going to click on done and it doesn't look like a restart is required but having said that I am going to restart terminal so I'm just going to quit terminal and I'm going to restart it and now if I say git dash dash version there we go so we've got 2.17.2 .2 running at the moment so that's fine that's great cool so next up we want to uh, download and install source tree so I've already got, uh, if I open up the Safari browser here, I've already got uh, the URL at sourcetreeapp.com. That's sourcetreeapp.com and that opens up Atlassian's uh, Sourcetree website and you can see we've got the download link here for Mac OS X. So you can just click on that to download the file. I've already downloaded it on my side. If I go to downloads, there's Sourcetree over there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this into the applications folder and inside there I'm going to double click to run it. Alright, so we're going to go through a bit of an install over here. Now uh, with Source Tree you do have to register a free Atlassian account. It doesn't take a lot to uh, register this. I think you can even also register using your um, uh, your Google and Facebook accounts. But in order to do this um, you can either go and create a free account by clicking on this link over here or you can go and log in. In my case I've already logged in so I'm just going to click on Bitbucket Cloud. Bitbucket Server is an on-premise version of source control um, of a source control server but Bitbucket Cloud is the cloud source control server of Atlassian. So I'm just going to click on that and I'm going to go and log in with my credentials. So you see yeah, you've got the option to also log in with Google. And there we go. Registration is complete and I am now logged into Source Tree. So we can click on continue and we can also just go and set up one or two preferences over here. So you can go and set your global auth details for any kind of commit that you make. You can just specify your name as well as your email address and uh, you can also select this to improve Source Tree by sending uh, anonymized analytics. Uh, in my case I'm just going to deselect this for now and I'm just going to go and update some details over here. And then we click on done. Right, so that opens up this uh, application over here. And it's already finding a number of uh, items that I've already set up on my environment. 
Right, so there's just two more things that I'd like to uh, that I'd like to show and have you do on your side. When it comes to source tree, it's very it's a very good idea that your that your uh, source control designs remain in some sort of central folder. Uh, this is a great practice overall, instead of them existing in these various different folders on your file system. So the first thing that I want to go and do is um, in my on my file system in let's say documents, I'm going to go and create a new folder and I'm going to call it source tree. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to source tree preferences. And I am going to change the project folder under general to documents source tree. And I'm going to click on OK. So that must now read documents source tree. That means uh, whenever you go and clone a new project, it will by default point to the source tree folder, which is just, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take away a lot of pain for you at the end of the day. Then the last thing that we need to do is in the Git tab, this tab over here, you see under here by Git version, it's using the embedded Git. All right, um, you can use this, but I've found it to be a lot slower than just using the system git environment all right so what i want to do here is i want to click on say use system git and it already points to the locally installed git it should if you if it installed the same way as what i showed earlier on so we can just click on open and it's now pointing to system git which means that the client is going to be a lot faster than what you're used to everything else can stay the the same for now so let's run a final test just to see what's going on over here. So I've opened up GitHub and I just went to a very, very popular uh, Node.js project called Lodash. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go and say I want to clone this. So I'm just going to say um, I'm going to copy this URL over here and I'm going to go to source tree and I'm going to say new clone from URL. I'm going to paste it inside there and you can see that it goes and defaults everything automatically so you can see it's pointing to the source tree folder and it's going to create a project for Lodash and if I click on the clone we now have the Lodash uh, source control on our local environment and we can actually go through the source tree client to go and see all kinds of commits that took place uh, what changed during these versions and if we go to the folder itself under source tree, we can see there's now a folder for Lodash. So this is a great way of managing source control across very di various different uh, platforms, development environments. It's just a brilliant tool to use. And that's it for this video. I hope you, your environments are up and running the same way that mine is. And until next time, cheers.